Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. Lifestyles are medicine. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. And the longer that I'm in this game of health, I'm realizing something. I'm realizing that your choices matter more than your genetics. We're learning that more now than ever. And so the great news about that is it doesn't matter what grandma and grandpa passed down because now you can get to a place where you can get better just by the choices that you make every single day. You don't have to be stuck where you are. You can actually get to a better level in your health and life simply by making better lifestyle choices. It comes down to you. Like nobody else can do this for you. Grandma, get grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, sister, brother, no one else can take responsibility for your health but you. So on this show, we're going to help you do that. Make sure you get a copy of my free book. Go to myfreehealthbook.com. That's myfreehealthbook.com, and we'll send you a free copy. It's a hardback copy. It's my best-selling book. It's got the anti-inflammatory diet in it. That can help you be an encouragement to you, help you get to that next level, help you to get started. You know, people are struggling with diabetes and heart disease and high blood pressure and and all of these things, depression, and they're trying to figure out what can I do? How do I get started? Because at the end of the day, you just you don't want to just be throwing medications at people. And I know that doctors are doing the best that they can because when they've only got 10 minutes with you, they can't go home with you. They can't put some eating plan together. They can't make you get out of bed in the morning, right, and exercise. They can't do all those things, right? So it takes, it takes someone to really come in and, and make a difference with your situation. So if you've only got 10 minutes, a doctor's going to give you a medication. Right, because they can encourage you and say, "Hey, you got to eat better, you got to exercise." But at the end of the day, they can't do that for you, and they know that, so they have to do the best that they can to help you get the kind of health that they want you to have, to at least stabilize your body. So it comes down to our choices, and that's what we want to focus on here on this show. Make sure you check us out on the web. Go to DrAsaShow.com. That's DrAsaShow.com. All right, let's get on the phones and talk to Sadie. Hi, Sadie. What is your health challenge? I'm just calling about a thyroid issue. Um, I've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and I just got my TSH back, and it was 6.98, and my T3 was 2.2, and I just wanted to know um, what that level was, um, what I thought about that level. Yeah. So your TSH is, is high. Right, but in the thyroid, it's kind of weird because when you have a higher number, it means the thyroid's running slower, and when you have a really low number, like 0.5 or something like that, it means it's running really, really fast. And so, what do you do? There's a lot of things that affect the thyroid like that. A lot of things. So you really want to figure out where your body's nutritionally deficient. Like, what is it not getting enough that it needs? Many times, it's iodine. The thyroid functions in a tremendous way on iodine. And they say, oh, you get plenty of iodine in your diet. No, we don't. It's not even in our diet. They took it out of salt. They took it out of white bread. They took it out, and they replaced it with bromide, which, interestingly enough, with bromide, you, it goes in and blocks the molecule or blocks the receptor site where iodine can bind to the cell in the body. That's kind of technical. But the bottom line is it's like a football player blocking someone. That's what bromide is doing right now. And they replaced iodine back in the 50s with bromide, you know, for whatever reason. Okay, so we don't get enough iodine in our, in our, in our diet. We don't get enough in our body. Matter of fact, most people are very deficient in iodine if you do some kind of testing on them. And we can figure that out. So what do you do? TSH, you've got to get, of course, the lab tests are important. I would get a genetic test done because you really want to figure out in the gene sequencing, and I'm really big on this right now because I've seen so much in regenerative medicine and how it's helping people, but a genetic test, very specialized toward nutrition, will show you the sequencing that your body prefers. So whatever you're dealing with, whatever food you're taking in, you want to know what your body is actually going to utilize to make the body function better. And everyone's body prefers a certain way. Like some people work much better on carbohydrates than they do fats. Some people work better on fats than they do carbohydrates. Some people, definitely everybody pretty much works great on protein. We know that, but we've also got to figure out you know exactly what you wouldn't want to figure out what your body needs now the other thing too that's really important about the thyroid you've got to look at that but tyrosine is really important it's amino acid we get that in our food supply but if you get deficient in that it can cause the thyroid to slow down and that's something we got to be cautious with so excited so excited so excited that you're with us this show is about you it's about your health and your life check us out dr that's dr look 
no matter what you're struggling with, whatever you're sitting there with or walking there with or watching with or driving with, whatever it is, I want you to know that you don't have to stay the same, that whatever diagnosis that you've been given, there is a better day coming and you can walk through this. Do you know that health, I have figured out more than anything, like we we sit here and talk about ways to, to live better. But if you lose your health, you really lose everything. Like if I gave, if I told you I was going to give you a million dollars, but you had to die tomorrow, would you take it? No, you wouldn't. If I told you that I would give you a million dollars, but you have to cut off your leg and live with only one leg the rest of your life, would you do it? No. If I told you that I'd give you a million dollars, you can have it, but you'll have prostate cancer for the last 20 years of your life, would you take it? No one would, okay? Health is the most valuable asset that we have, but yet everywhere you turn, the only thing people talk about is money. And I promise you that if you don't take the time and to be a good steward of your health, if you don't take the time to really focus in and make good choices and good decisions with your health, number one, you won't be here very long, okay? Your life will be cut short. And that's not a thing only God knows. No, if you're, if you're eating a bunch of junk food and crap and you're not exercising and you've got terrible thoughts and you've got a lot of stress, it's going to be cut short. Like this is not a, a God thing. This is not a faith thing. This is you're being a terrible steward. We're being a terrible steward of what we've been given thing. So we have to step up and really make the right kind of choices. The good news is, though, see, this is really what's so great about how God made the body is that it regenerates every single day. So each day, old cells die off, new cells form. We get a brand new body about every year, some parts of our body, seven years. But the great news about that is that's so amazing is that, that we have a second chance, and a third chance, and a fourth chance, and a fifth chance, and the list goes on and on. We have amazing ability to make new choices each day, to get the body to regenerate so that we can become better. And that's that's really what this whole thing is all about. If you haven't got a free copy of my book, go to myfreehealthbook.com. That's myfreehealthbook.com. And we'll send you a copy. Look, we're, we're doing this to encourage people, to help people. Uh, so many people don't know where to start. You know, we're coming into a time where everyone's been a little bit tense, a little bit nervous, a little bit unsure about things. And, you know, getting your health right is probably one of the most important things that you can do. But you need the tools. And that's why we're giving you the book, Hard Copy Book, my bestseller. It's got the anti-inflammatory diet in it. Just go to myfreehealthbook.com. We'll send it to you. And if you want to send me an email or shoot me a DM on social media, any of that, just go to dracesshow.com. That's dracesshow.com. You can find us everywhere, okay? But just go to the website. You'll find all the, the links and everything. But t- Twitter, TikTok, you know, YouTube, all of that, we're there. Okay, let's get to the phones. Actually, you know what? I want to hit an email real quick. We've got Samantha in Miami, Florida. She wants to know what to do for irregular periods. Okay, look, this is it's a great question. So many women struggle with this. Number one, you got to look at your stress levels. Hands down, you start getting irregular periods, and you will find a woman that has a lot of stress. It might be emotional stress. It might just be like familial. It might be your kids, it might be work, it could be financial, whatever it is, okay? You want to evaluate that because stress plays a big role when it comes to irregular periods. Remember, the mental side of this game, of this health game, plays a bigger role than anything else. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. Find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at inshapenetwork.com. So evaluate that, check that, make sure that everything's okay in that area. Number two is you want to check two areas in your lab work. So get some lab work done to check for different nutritional deficiencies. Actually, three. You want to check the methylation process in your body. Is it working? Is it not? The second thing is your B12 levels and also your iron levels. Now, on the iron, it's kind of tricky because it could just be iron, but it, most of the time, it's that your body's not absorbing the iron that you need. And if you can't absorb the iron that you need, there's the issue. That, that lies the issue right there. Many times, it has to do with vitamin C, and you're not getting enough vitamin C 
in your diet. So there's a blood test you can check called ferritin. And ferritin needs to be looked at just to see if you've got enough of that storage tank that is going to help the body. So, so important to check that out. So I would encourage you to get those areas looked at. Get with one of our health coach providers that can get a lab test done wherever you are. We do it with people all over the country. We've got people everywhere to help. But that's one of the big things. A regular period, yes, it can be a challenge. But if you've got the right tools and you've got the right information, you can totally do really well. So hope that helps. This show is about you. It's about your health, and it's about your life. If you don't have a free copy of my book, go get it. Go to MyFreeHealthBook.com, MyFreeHealthBook.com. Hey, we've got a great community, too. If you go to Dr. Ace's show, Dot com. You can find everything there. We've got a great group of people that we meet often during the week. You get ways to interact with me uh, more so than, than here on the show. You can actually interact with me doing lives, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We're, we're on all those platforms. So check us out. Get in our community. It's called the Health Club. We would love to have you. Let's get on the phones and go to Joshua. What's your health challenge? Yes, my um – Medical um, I'm looking at is um, I had some blood work done and I, my, my glucose, my sugar is high, and I want to know what do I need to do to bring it down? What would you recommend for me yeah, to bring so, it down okay, and so, get it under so here's, control? Here's the real thing that you got to look at uh, in, in something like that, Joshua. The, with blood sugar, it's really one of those things where it's not hard, okay? It's really not. What happens is with, with diabetes and in either any of the pre-diabetes, which is kind of like the phase before that, well, our body starts having what's called insulin resistance. It's where the, the receptors, if you think about it, that are in the body when, when uh, they need insulin to come in and help get the blood sugar down. If you're eating carbohydrates over and over and over again, constantly, like never ending, then what happens is these little receptors, which are like suction cups, they get kind of like, you know how a suction cup gets uh, where it just doesn't do the suction anymore, right? It's kind of slick, like you stick it on a window and it just falls, or you stick it on a window and it slides down. Same thing. That's what happens in the body. So the receptor gets kind of like wonky. It doesn't work anymore. And no matter how much insulin or if the body's producing insulin, it's just not working. Like it slides right off. So what you have to do is you've got to cut down your carbohydrate intake. And you only want to do carbohydrates that are low on the glycemic index. So you need to look at the glycemic index. Go to our website. Go to DrAcesShow.com. You can find a, a list there. But look at the glycemic index. And find the numbers, anything, any carbohydrate foods under 30 is where you want to stay. So things like berries will be there and uh, beans. Uh, you, you've got certain carbohydrates. All vegetables are going to be under 30, right? Like broccoli, green beans, uh, you know, all those kind of things, right? Peas will be under there. But, you know, things like potatoes and rice and all, so even sweet potatoes, they start getting above 30. You don't want to do those. And you want to keep your carbohydrates minimal. So I always say that if you're, if you're really trying to get your insulin resistance down and get the blood sugar to go stable, protein with every meal, never miss. A little bit of good healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados with every meal. And then also you have to let your carbohydrates don't need to be more than whatever your weight is in grams per day so if you weigh 200 pounds but if you're super overweight like if you're over 300 pounds you always want to do about half your body weight in carbs okay so we've got formulas for that everyone's different it's really that that's a tough one but i can tell you bottom line is protein with every meal you can't lose that way and then a little bit of fat with every meal you're going to stabilize your blood sugar that way and then your carbs are the variable because remember the body's set up like this in in healthcare we have or in nutrition we have essential amino acids those are proteins we have essential fatty acids those are fats and there are no essential carbohydrates when we do need them and we do need some people argue that but we do i think the brain functions great on uh, on blood sugar and or on sugar and, and carbs and glycogen so it's one of those things that y yes you get into ketosis and, and it can work just fine too i get it there's different theories but the bottom line is a little bit of carbohydrate, because even in keto, uh, you, you're going 50 carb carbs a day at least. You're getting a little bit, right? So it's going to be really, I'll get somebody to walk with you, a health coach provider, someone to coach you in the process. If you need help, just let us know. But also get a genetic test done to check out your variable sequences in the nutrition. That's going to make a huge difference. 
So glad you're with us. This show is about you, and it's about your health, and it's about your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. Lifestyle is our medicine, so the choices that you're making today can and will determine the kind of health you're going to have tomorrow. It's interesting. You know, so many people struggle, I think, with their health, with their weight, uh, energy levels, vitality. One thing I want to talk about is that, and, and I'm guilty of this, but it, it's something, I'm, I'm one of those people that go 100 miles an hour, okay? Like, all day long, I go, I can be five hours of sleep, and I can just go. I'm one of those people. I work out two, three times a day, you know, work my companies and business, everything, do the shows, whatever. But I've learned something. I've been studying a lot on rest and recovery, right? We just don't talk a lot about it. But it's really important. When we talk about sleep, like getting seven to nine hours, whatever, they're finding that some of the most successful people in history, okay, people like Henry Ford, like major players, they live to be, you know, if you look at a lot of these guys, like Henry Ford lived to be 98. I love studying longevity and, and what people did. You know, and my granny lived to be 94, Right, and she smoked for like 50 years, and she quit, and which was great, like in her 80s. But imagine that she smoked for like 50 years, and she never had lung cancer. You know, like like just died of old age. Like took her last breath, and that was it in her sleep. Pretty amazing. But my, I always question, like, how do people live longer? What do they do? What? How does someone die at 65, right, with a cancer tumor, and they lived in the city and they breathed that kind of air, and what kind of stress were they under? What kind of choices did they make? All of that versus someone that lived on a farm, right, and breathed probably cleaner air and, and made better, probably had less stress. You know, you're out with the cows and the chickens and the horses. How stressful can that? I mean, I know it's hard work. Don't get me wrong. We, I had a farm. I grew up on a farm with my, my grandparents. So I know what that's like. But my point is, city life is different, right? Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Rasa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. Find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. If you're stressed out and, you're, and you're, you have a high-stress life, it makes a big difference. So I've always been fascinated with that. But one thing I've been studying recently is Henry Ford took two naps a day. Now, the research has come out, and it's showing that if you take at least one fifty, you can't go more than like 20 minutes. Okay, like if you get into 30 minutes, it's going to increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Literally, if you sleep more than nine hours, it, it almost gives you a 50% increase in cardiovascular disease and strokes. Like, that's not good. But they're saying that these 15-minute naps, if you set your alarm, Henry Ford did one every single day. He slept about six hours, and then he took one to two 15-minute naps a day, and he said he was twice as productive. He started doing that in his 40s, and he lived to be 98 with no major health conditions overall. And so the, the biggest thing that happens with a lot of people that run hard like that, that are super successful, are heart disease, right? So their heart, you know, high blood pressure, and then leads to things like kidney issues, and then everything goes downhill from there. So my point is, is, I'm, is I think you should look at, depending on how your lifestyle is, look at naps and look at the potential of napping, what it can do, and how it can benefit. Because what happens is even in those 15 minutes when you go down and sleep for a minute, you, everything, your growth hormone goes up in the body, cortisol levels go down, your testosterone comes up if you're a male, your estrogen progesterone balance begins to work better uh, during that time. So there's so much that happens during a nap. Now, is it hard to do? For me, yeah, I'm still working on it. But I'm just sharing with you, this is something that I think for longevity is an absolute game changer. And I think it's like, I think a lot of people look at naps like that's what kids do. I had some extremely successful business friends that to this day, like one of them keeps a big leather couch in their personal office and you could not, the president could call them and they're not missing their nap. All right. It's all about living your best life and you have to find out what works best for you. 
Welcome. I'm so glad you're with us. This show is about you. It's about your health, and it's about your life. You can check us out always. Go to DrAsaShow.com. That's DrAsaShow.com. Give me a call, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. You can always give us a call there. We'll make you part of the show, whatever you're struggling with. Remember, great or small. doesn't matter if it's diabetes, heart disease, fibromyalgia, depression, weight gain, weight loss, whatever it is, we're here to help. We want to help you live the kind of life that you were designed to live. Go to DrAsaShow.com, and we'll do everything we can to get you the help that you need. We have providers all around the country, and we've also got our world-class uh, regenerative medicine clinic down in here in Florida, and you're welcome to come. And many of the people come down for stem cell therapy, and of course, you hear me talk a lot about that on the show, but stem cells are one of the most advanced pieces that have been going on in regenerative medicine, like people that are facing hip replacements or knee replacements, or they have a bad shoulder. Uh, we had someone that just came in with a, with a wrist the other day, an athlete in his 20s, and by putting the stem cells in there, after a period of time, it's regenerated. It's 100% for him. He's back playing the sports that he wanted to play, lifting the weights that he wanted to lift. Like, it is absolutely groundbreaking what stem cell therapy is doing for people. And so if you need more information on that, just always give us a call. Our health coach providers can help you. But we've got our facility where we do that. You take a little trip down to beautiful Florida right there on the beach, and we love to serve you there. 888 Let's get on the phones and go to Pauline. Pauline, what's your health challenge? My question is, how could I get rid of cramping and coldness in my fingers and my feet? Mostly my fingers. Lots of cramping in my fingers. I'm very active, but I've been going through uh, some healing. I injured uh, my leg and... Um, I think I've got diabetes, but I watch my diet very closely. Please help me if you possibly can. Yes, sweetheart. The, you know, the big thing is, and, and again, I know I, I know it's tough. When you get diabetes, it's like, okay, now you get this diagnosis with a label, like you're wearing it around your neck, and you're like, okay, what do I do with this, right? It's diabetes. It's one of those things that you don't have to be, don't freak out, number one. I know you're starting to get the numbness and the tingling and all of that, but there's multiple things that could be going on. And neuropathy is what we typically call that, but diabetes is typically the driver in it. Number one, with diabetes, again, I've done several reality TV shows on the Discovery Channel about diabetes called Reverse. You can always check them out. But what we did and what we always do clinically with all our health coach providers is we focus in on your eating strategies, number one. First, you've got to get a blood test done uh, or a test done to check and see what your overall nutritional deficiencies are. That is extremely important because you have to see the sequencing and the patterns that your body has to figure out exactly what's going on. That is the game changer, and we have to figure that out first, all right? So if you don't know that, it's like doing things blind. There's strategic nutrition, and there's blind nutrition, and that's really more of a blind kind of nutrition that you have to be careful with. A lot of people just like watch the show or listen to the show. <clears throat> they go to Google, whatever, and they just try to figure it out. Can't do that. With diabetes, you gotta have a plan. Gotta have a strategy. Now, once you know your deficiencies, you, got, you have to look at your eating strategy. Now, it's going to be based on your body, but I can tell you some basics. Number one with diabetes, you want to keep your protein in every meal, always. You always want to do uh, good healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados, those kind of things. In all of your meals, helps to stabilize blood sugar and keep your carbohydrates low to moderate. I always say about a gram per pound of body weight, if not half that, if you can tolerate it. And that will help you get out of insulin resistance and get you situated in a much better place uh, for your body to work much, much better. So that's one of the main keys you have to look at. You know, the key is with diabetes is consistency. You have to be consistent. You can't let it go. And you also can't just say, like, don't ever fall into the camp with diabetes where you say something like, well, it's controlled, or you know, it's okay, or whatever. You, if the medicine is making your number healthy, then you're not in a good position. I don't care what any, anybody says. I don't care. Like, if the medicine is managing it, okay, well, great for the medicine, but what is your body doing? Take the medicine away, and then your body can't function, right? Take the metformin out of there. Take the glucophage out of there. Take the insulin out of there. Watch what happens. Then it goes haywire. That's why your lifestyle habits with exercise, your eating, and even sleeping make a big difference with diabetes.
Lines are open, 888-283-7272. You can always give us a call there, 888-283-7272. This is the Dr. Asa Show. You can go to DrAsaShow.com, and we'll do whatever we can to help you. Look, this show is about you. It's about your health. It's about your life. If the body can get sick, it can also get well. Lifestyles are medicine. And so remember that. So, like, you, whenever I talk to someone... And they give me their woes, right? Their, their things, ah, oh, this, and I've got diagnosed with that. My doctor says this, and the blood test said I'm fine, but I'm not fine. And, you know, let's just cut, cut the mustard, as I like to say. You know, you are where you are right now because of the choices that you've made. It's not genetics. Like this whole family history thing, there is some 10% truth to that but this whole thing is not genetic i promise you and i've been around long enough to see this in clinical practice and i know the research like we're figuring out that 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 you can change your genetics by the choices that you make for the good or the bad but i can tell you this that we've learned something that's really interesting is that when you say family history like when you say my brother had diabetes my dad had diabetes guess what they all ate the same and you say, oh, no, no, no. No, they did. Because how our parents raise us is typically how we, we tend to follow unless you go a different route and you learn something different. But that's what typically happens. And so many people in their family have the same conditions because they ate the same way. Unless it's some weird genetic cancer or, you know, some organ that's faulty because of a genetic issue or whatever. Then the genetic plays a big role, all right? The gene plays a big role. But most of the time, we do it to ourselves. So the good news is, I'm not saying that to point a finger. I mean, I kind of am pointing a finger, so I'll just point the finger. Uh, I'm not giving the finger. I'm pointing the finger. That's a big difference. Giving, uh, telling you this is giving you hope. Because if you're sitting there and you're like, man, it's my genetics. Well, well I mean, as we say in the South, dang it. Might as well just, you know, eat the fast food and the donuts and, and kick your feet up and just wait to die. Is that really it? No. The good news is you can actually take responsibility. You can start learning things that we're talking about. You can start exercising every single day. You can start eating the right kind of foods. You can get healthier. The, the person that you are a year from now doesn't have to be the person that you are today. You can thrive and you can get better. You can become a different person. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to be the 100-pound overweight person. You don't have to be the 50 pound overweight. You don't have to be the five medication person. You don't have to be this human being that is just like suffering. You don't have to be that. You can change. That's the great news about this whole thing with health is your body was designed to regenerate. And if you give it the right tools and you give it the right strategy, okay, and you put the discipline in, as we always say, put the work in. If you do the work, then the body will respond and you can become the best version of you. And on this show, we want to help you do that. Like that is the ultimate key. Give us a call, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Go to DrAsaShow.com. Hey, if you haven't got a free copy of my book, look, we're giving it to you for free. An absolute free copy. Go to MyFreeHealthBook.com. That's MyFreeHealthBook.com. Uh, we'll just send it to you. Okay, so just go there and you, you sign up for it or whatever. You order online. Can't do it over the phone, by the way. Just do it online, okay? But they'll send you a copy of it. you got to pay for, like, the shipping or something like that. But they hardback copy will send it right to your door, okay? Just because we believe in you, we want to help you, we want to see you thrive, want to see you make it. And if you haven't started following me on social media, go to Dr. Ace's show. All my handles are there. You can easily find it. And, and look, DM me. Send me your questions. We answer them. So on Facebook, Twitter, you know, we, we answer those things. So I'll be glad to help you, encourage you, walk with you, whatever it is. Whatever you need. Look, because your health is the most vital aspect of your life. Your money is not. I'm telling you. Take away your health, what do you have? Nothing. Take away your money, you'll be struggling, but then you'll get it back. Right? You have a chance to get it back. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Right? And you don't want to lose your health either. And so it's about the choices that you're making every single day. That's the key. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at inshapenetwork.com. My question to you is this. Are you drinking your water? 
Now, if you meet me anywhere, uh, there's a couple things that I'll say to you, okay? Especially if you're somebody like a listener. I, I, I meet people all the time that, that watch the show, listen to the show. One of the big keys, though, that's a non-negotiable for me, for others, is drinking enough water. Like, it is, if you could, like, if you could throw everything else the window with health, I mean, I don't know, exercise is pretty much up there. you got to get moving. <clears throat> but I can tell you this, that your water intake is really a big deal. So here's the rule of thumb. Half your body weight in ounces of water every single day. Now, always break it into two goals. Because if you do the thing where you carry the big jug with you, which you see a lot of people do, <clears throat> I don't do that. I'll carry a bottle about like this. It's about 30 ounces, something like that. But I'll carry a bottle like that with me and, and fill it up. You know, I do, I do at, least, at least 180 ounces a day, okay? So like a gallon and a half. Sometimes up to two gallons of water a day. But you need that much. You have no idea how dehydrated you are. So you really want to get in. You want to get to a place where you're getting enough water. So let's just say it's a gallon, okay? That's 120 ounces. So set two goals a day. Do 60 ounces and keep up with this. 60 ounces by lunchtime and 60 ounces by dinner time. If you do that, then you don't get waterlogged. If you do that, you don't get to 8 o'clock at night. You've got 100 ounces you've got to drink. Because that's not safe for the kidneys. You don't want to do more than about 30 ounces an hour to, to keep strain off of the kidneys. So be cautious with that. Don't just down 50-something ounces of water at once. It's an overload on the body and it's really hard on the kidneys so strain them but getting enough water is a key and again people ask me what kind it doesn't matter just make sure it doesn't have fluoride in it that it's filtered that it doesn't have all the 300 chemicals that are in most tap water systems and people get all mad at me they're like no look it, it's it's true <laughs> go to the go to the environmental protection agency website and just look go to your local city and look they have all these chemicals they can't help it it's just part of the it's part of the water system like they're not you know meaning for it to be in there they're not like pouring it in there it's just there right? So you just want to wore off as many of the chemicals as you can and get the cleanest water they can. It's that simple. Like nobody's pointing a finger at anybody. A lot of my, lot of my colleagues are like, you know, pointing the finger at the government, uh, you know, local city government and all that about their water. Look, come on. You know, they're doing what they can. You make your own choices for water. You can get a filter system at home. You can, you, you can get your own water filtration. You can buy bottled water. You can do, they got all the BPA-free containers now that you can get your water in. Spring water's good. Distilled water's good. Distilled water will pull minerals out of your body. That's the only thing you got to be cautious with on that. But make sure you get enough water. That's kind of my key. Like my whole thing is I don't get hung up on the Kangen water and the alkaline water and making sure it's 9.0. I don't get hung up on any of that. Just get the water in. Like that's the main key with this whole thing. 888 is the number. That's 888 Give us a call. Go to DrAcesShow.com. And if you don't have a free copy of my book, make sure to get a copy, MyFreeHealthBook.com. All right. Let's jump in and go to Ramona. Hi, Ramona. What's your health challenge? I just want to know. What can I do to increase my oxygen in my body? Because they got me doing it uh, 24 hours a day. Mm. And I would like to know, you know, that I, so I can get off yeah. the, the oxygen. Well, I'll tell you, let me tell you something. Hypoxia, which is the lack of oxygen, is the number one killer. People think that it's like poor diet, uh, heart disease, cancer. All these conditions thrive in a lack of oxygen environment. So what I would tell you is what one of the, the great, great physicians that trained me years ago told me, that whenever anything's going haywire in your body, if you're on oxygen, if you get to that place where you're on oxygen, you need to fight, meaning that you need to be up walking, doing exercise every hour. Every hour you should be up walking five minutes. If you can't, get your body moving somehow. But, but crawl, like whatever you have to do, you've got to exert your body and get it breathing hard and get it working hard because that's the only way that you're going to fight back against what the body's doing right now. If you just sit back and allow your body to use the oxygen machine and that's it, that's not good. Now, we use oxygen as a therapy, and then you go continue to breathe on your own. But if you're having to be on oxygen all day long, you've got, you have to start exerting yourself. Like activity is one of the biggest keys when it comes to oxygen. It's not any kind of supplement or food. It's your own activity that's going to help. Give us a call, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. This is the Dr. Asa Show. Go to DrAcesShow.com. What are you struggling with? Look, we're here for you every single day. No matter what you deal with, what you struggle with, people want to know, hey, what can I do? Matter of fact, John sent an email in. He's in Kansas City, and he wants to know what to do for a swollen prostate. He says, my PSA is in normal range, but I can't pee. What do I do? All right, that's interesting. Okay, because obviously the prostate is swollen or there's a major bladder issue. Okay, that needs to be figured out, which I'm assuming they probably have. But if they haven't figured that out yet, that's, that's kind of important because the good thing is you don't have a high PSA, which is, can be indicative of cancer. That's, that's a real good thing. Like, that's great news. Okay, the, the no peeing thing is not cool. That is not good news. Okay, like we got to get it out. You've got to be able to pee. Like I'm with you, right? 
So one of the things you've got to be able to do is, is have them check it out. But there's procedures that can be done with the prostate where they can remove, kind of move the prostate, kind of flap type thing, and they move it off the pressure of the bladder so you can pee and the urination you know, starts again. The interesting thing about that is, though, you're not really getting to the root cause. You ever thought about that? Like, okay, I know you need to pee. Like, that's the immediate. Like, got to pee. I get it. So getting the relief is good, but you're not getting to the core root of the issue. The question is, what's causing the prostate to swell? That's the question that's got to be answered. And only after testing, figuring out nutritionally, because the prostate doesn't just swell because you're getting older. Like, it's not just some age thing that, that the prostate's swelling. So we've got to figure out exactly with the prostate what the issue is. So you've got to figure out exactly what's going on with the prostate. That's the key of what I would look at. Okay, number one is make sure, hands down, that you, you get some blood work done that looks at all the different nutritional deficiencies, okay, all of them. And then get genetic testing done to look at the sequencing nutritionally of what your body prefers and what it functions better with. Now, there's a study done by an a endocrinologist that looked into this, and they found that because of men's, our progesterone levels drop after the age of 40 pretty bad, like they really start to fall off. And as progesterone levels dropped, the prostate began to swell, and as they gained gave men progesterone, the prostate swelling began to go back, you know, to normal size. So there's a theory about progesterone therapy for men and how progesterone therapy can actually reduce the swollen prostate. So that's something you might want to look into as well. And again, testing will show that because many times men's estrogen gets really high the older we get, which is, is crazy. You don't want that because estrogen is kind of the inverse of testosterone. If estrogen goes up, T levels go down, right? And we know that's a big thing. So you want the T levels to be up, estrogen to be down. If estrogen goes up, the progesterone also comes down. If estrogen goes down, progesterone comes up. So you want to work on those pathways to figure out exactly what the issue is. That's why the blood testing is so important. I would get that done. If you need one of our health coach providers to help you do that, we can. We can walk you through it, help you through it, you know, kind of get you to the next level uh, with your health on that because you have to have a strategy. The prostate being swollen is a big, big deal. And you don't want to let it sit. I am a big fan of getting to the root cause of things. And so are all of our providers in our clinics and especially of our main clinic facility in Florida. So make sure you get the, the test done so you can become the best version of you. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book, all you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the AsaRx audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.